Hello guys and welcome back. Today I'm breaking down the damage multipliers from each respective Borderlands game and then hopefully we can figure out which system worked the best. So with that, let's get right into it. Corrosive in Borderlands 1. If an enemy was corroded, they would take 15% more damage from all sources. Then there was Slag from Borderlands 2. Enemies would take double damage in TVHM and NDHM, which was True Vault Hunter mode and Normal Vault Hunter mode, while in UVHM or Ultimate Vault Hunter mode, enemies would take triple damage. But if a Slag gun was used against a Slag enemy, they would only get a 50% damage bonus. Then there was Cryo in Borderlands the pre-sequel. Frozen enemies take 250% extra melee damage, 210% explosive damage, and 110% critical hit damage. But enemies were also immobilized by Cryo, and the Cryo guns themselves still received the full effect to frozen enemies. First, let's talk about Corrosive in Borderlands 1. In all honesty, Corrosive isn't required. It is there if a player is in a group and wants to support the higher damage dealers, but that usually isn't the case. In Borderlands 1, every weapon can be utilized at endgame with every character. Obviously, there are stronger weapons like the Anarchy and stronger characters like Lilith and Brick, but scaling works differently in Borderlands 1, which allows the players to utilize more loot, and a lot of the time, no two players will use the same loadout. Also, the characters themselves do not need the multiplier. Lilith is strong enough and can use an Anarchy, which does more damage than any corrosive weapon, even with the multiplier. Brick has an amazing Blastmaster explosive build, which uses all three weapon slots for explosive weapons, and the last one for a Hellfire, which has a really strong fire dot or damage over time. Roland and Mordecai are the only characters that probably benefit the most from these weapons, but it's still not necessary if the player finds stronger, higher level, higher damage weapons instead. Second, we'll talk about Slag in Borderlands 2. I would say out of all three elements, Slag is the least popular. Because part of the scaling of the game, once the player reached UVHM, it became almost necessary in every build to have some sort of Slag skill. And each class had a skill that is picked up because of that. Zero had Kunai, Axton had Double Up, which allowed his turret to shoot Slag rounds. Maya had Scorn and Ruin. Gage has Interspersed Outburst, and Krieg was the only character that really doesn't have one. Salvador technically doesn't either, but he can dual wield and hold a slag weapon. And unfortunately because of this, it led to a lot of players being fed up with slag. And it wasn't that players had to use slag, but also to balance out Healthgate, they would be confined even further to use a Grog Nozzle or Ruby. And if they really didn't need the health, then a Slaga. But for the most part, those are the only Slag weapons you see people use once they reach high level in Borderlands 2. Last is Cryo. This added something new to Borderlands, which was CC, or Crowd Control to Enemies, which I think players enjoyed. One grenade could be thrown and freeze enemies to give either the players time to reload, maybe they would pick off a few enemies, or they could wait for their action skill to come back. For everything wrong with the pre-sequel, I would say most players agree with Cryo the most. And from what I've heard from the community, they want this to continue on in the series. I know that uh, Gearbox is going to have to fit it in the story somehow and say that methane is found on this new planet, but they can easily do that. Say they find the same methane on Promethea and we could have Cryo. Players also uh, praise Cryo as making the player use the mechanics in the game and utilizing multiple weapons. If an enemy had a shield, players could use a shock weapon to bring down the enemy shield, then use a cryo weapon to freeze the enemy, and then switch to either an explosive weapon, an accurate weapon to utilize the critical hit damage, or just a melee, forcing the player to use the mechanics Gearbox put into the game for this exact reason. Which then also makes the player feel like they kind of have weapons to switch to, there's a lot of a lot more weapons to hunt for, not just only using one weapon to kill everything. On the forum, someone uh, simplified the system down to, quote, In Borderlands 1, I just used whatever weapon was right or fun to kill with. In Borderlands 2, it felt like I was forced at higher levels to go through elemental gymnastics to kill even the basic enemies. In the Borderlands the pre-sequel, I would just use whatever weapon is right or fun to kill with. 
So yes, the pre-sequel kind of went back to that, and I know it isn't just always because of the damage multipliers. A lot of it has to do with scaling in the game, which is a whole nother video in and of itself. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you prefer Corrosive, Slag, or Cryo as the damage multiplier in the Borderlands games? Do they need to be modified or changed to something completely different? Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, and see you guys in the next one.